Welcome to Capital Outsider, a show about people and ideas outside the halls of power, exploring alternatives to conventional political wisdom. Our guest today is Eric Sundwall, candidate in New York's 20th Congressional District. Now you mentioned the issues that uh, you're going to be running on as four points. Uh, uh, what are those points? Uh, well, the, the first one is, is foreign policy. And uh, what the initial idea was behind that was that we all agree that uh, these conflicts and these occupations that the country are currently involved in are essentially um, not a good thing. And to, to withdraw from various places throughout the whole um, world, if you will, is something that would be a desirable thing. And of course, that kind of ties into two of the other issues, which would be the national debt and presumably the Federal Reserve. Now, you know, as you know, as a libertarian, those things can get intertwined in terms of how we talk about how we finance uh, our government, our budgets, our wars, if you will, uh, the role of that national debt and inflationary pressures with monetary systems. And of course, the second point of that whole four-point thing is the idea is your privacy. Uh, a repeal of the Patriot Act, uh, a repeal of the FISA. Uh, Which you alluded to. Uh, do you see any benefit in, in, uh, uh, in pursuing the Taliban and al-Qaeda and confronting them uh, uh, in Afghanistan or perhaps Pakistan? Well, I don't. And, and you know, it may be that some of these people are, were organized and based out of Afghanistan, but to go in and occupy another country and to take it over and to try to administer it based on these acts of terrorism, we, we've just extended ourselves beyond reasonable means at that it's what, oh, It's what every <laughs> voter that I come across is talking about. Left, right, center, uh, it doesn't matter. They're concerned about these stimulus packages and these bailouts and these politicians who just want to apologize for them and bring the money back into their district because it's going to be such a wonderful thing. Because the banks have been operating with this Federal Reserve System since 1913. So I presume that was even before you were a child, Bill. Yes, right? it you is. Know, okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, we've all kind of lived with it and know what it is. And, and, and when the gold standard was being followed, uh, there wasn't as much uh, tendency to, to inflate uh, fractional tr uh, reserve banking and turn it into what it's essentially what it's kind of blossomed into this Ponzi scheme. If you look at free market libertarian ideas and theories, the idea that Chrysler and GM should be allowed to fail are, are sound ideas because obviously they're not competing in the marketplace like they should. My question would be, is it, is it the government or the state's responsibility to, to make sure that the companies continue along poorly just so people can keep jobs? You have to... You have to regenerate, you have to reinvent yourself, you have to do new things. And you know, when we typically think about inflation, uh, we look at inflation as uh, the cost of a, a gallon of milk going up or a cup of coffee. But the reality is, is that inflation is what is the injection of the money, more money into the system. And uh, as long as the Federal Reserve can kind of do that unabated, uh, they will continue to do that. And uh, that becomes a big problem because suddenly currency gets devalued. If you were in Congress two weeks ago, would you have voted for the stimulus package? I would not have voted for the stimulus package. I've come out against the stimulus package. Uh, the Democrat in the race uh, has come out in favor of it. Uh, the Republican in the race has said, well, I haven't read the bill yet, so I don't know what I would do or vote on. Uh, I, I have no problem in principle looking at uh, this extension or this, this inflation of the money supply and stimulus as it's just sheer pork. And, uh, you know, they're rewarding themselves as politicians right now before kind of the whole house of cards collapses. Who's responsible? Who's responsible for an individual's health care? Is it the government? Is it his employer? Well, it has been since the HMO Act of 1973. Uh, any employer with over 25 employees was basically direct to, apply, uh, to, to have a nominal level of health care. Uh, in, in that time, it was generally a catastrophic thing that when, you know, if you were to just suddenly be struck down, that, that, that's the type of coverage that you get. The Clinton administration subsequently made that go, took it up a little higher and made a comprehensive uh, plan. 
morally is it my responsibility to make sure that you're brushing your teeth and you have good hygiene um, I, I don't see how anybody can make that case especially as a libertarian mm -hmm. thing. and, and I, I'd like to think that somehow we need to be a little bit more grounded in common sense and sensibilities uh, and that you know a vote for me in this particular election uh, would represent that okay uh, our guest has been Eric Sunwald. He is running for Congress in a special election to be held March 31st uh, in the 20th Congressional District. Uh, he has to get on the ballot first. I suppose that'll be decided by the time uh, people get a chance this. to view this. Yeah. Uh, Eric, thank you very much for coming on the hey, show. Hey, no problem, Bill. Always glad to be on Capital okay. Outsider. Thank you. <laughs>